Ottawa, um, which is a group of people who come together to work on public speaking and telling stories. Uh, they have meetings every Wednesday evening, and everyone is, of course, invited uh, to it. And again, there are many Toastmasters here in Ottawa, but he uh, support he uh, runs the only one that is in English. Uh, more importantly, uh, also they they have a um, storytelling nights, uh, storytelling evening. Excuse me, uh, shows which are done almost every month, right? Um, and again, if another thing that's based on a theme, uh, where people go up and tell a story. I participated on um, one a couple months ago, which was a fantastic uh, evening. Um, and his next one is going to be on January 11th uh, at Pub Vendrivka. Yeah, I can never say that right. Did I get that? So, which is near Povala, not far from Renoma. Uh, and again, you can go up and look at the uh, Toastmasters page and Storytelling Evening on Facebook, and you'll find all the information uh, that you'll need. So, uh, so let me bring him up. Uh, uh, he's, a, uh, like I said, an interesting guy and worth, and I'm looking forward to what he's going to be talking about. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please give a warm welcome to Zen. Okay, so I grew up watching a lot of Indian movies, although I'm not from India, I'm from Pakistan, but I watched a lot of Indian movies. I also saw a lot of Hollywood movies, most of them romantic, and all of them kind of have the same message, you know, underneath, that you will find your one, and it will be in the most unexpected way, like, you know, the most dreamy possible way. And I had this fantasy for me, you know, I will find my one as well, in the most unexpected way. I may have found, I, I don't know yet. This is not a story about that. <laughs> this is a story about how the world actually does seem to help us to find the one. And how it helps us is quite interesting. So the story that I'm going to tell you now is about the time I was responsible for making two people meet in a very unexpected way. So a few years back, I was talking with my friend, she's Polish, her name is Ola, and she like to, likes to travel all over Europe, she hitchhikes, and one of, in one of those trips, she was going to Serbia, Balkans uh, area, and on her way, she reached to Bratislava in Slovakia. Now, it has a big river just like Rotvov, right through the center of the city, and she was just standing next to this river. It was a beautiful summer evening, very nice city lights across uh, the river, beautiful scene, and she was just simply enjoying it. She was just standing there, looking across the river and enjoying it. When she noticed that there was this old couple, very old couple, probably in their late 60s, standing not far from her and looking at her. She's a very friendly person, so she smiled at them. They were also very friendly, so they smiled back. And then she's very adventurous, so we actually went to them and started asking, Hi, how are you? What do you do? And so on. It turns out that that old couple, they were actually German in their late 60s, and they were like hipsters. Or no, they were like hippies. Like, the actual hippies from 1960s. They were actually those. No, not the hipsters that we have these days. And... Uh, they had spent almost three decades of their life, the last three decades of their life, just traveling around the world. They were missionaries in India. They spent like 11, 12 years there. At some point, they stopped being missionaries, but they kept traveling still all around the world. And what was more interesting that they actually didn't believe in any of the new technology. They actually didn't have any money at all. They didn't have phones. They didn't have cameras. They had just their tents, just a few of their clothes, very old. So. And they used to travel just like that. And I have no idea how they were finding their food, for example. If they had no money, how, how were they eating? I have no idea. But anyway, they had their tent right next to the river. And my friend, she was also supposed to, she had also a tent and they offered her, she can put right next to them. So she did. And they spent a nice evening together talking. They had some food, they offered it to her, uh, gave her some tea. And they slept the night. In the morning, they had uh, another cup of tea, nice talk. And then she had to go further for her trip. But since that 
they lived such a life. There was no way to keep in touch with them because they were all the time traveling. They had no phone. They had no address. So she knew this is the last time she will see them. So she said her goodbyes and they didn't let her take a photograph because they were completely against that kind of technology. So they didn't let her take any pictures either. So she had a nice experience and she went with her travels. And for her, it was an interesting story, an interesting incident. So one day she decided to tell me. And I also found it interesting. A few years later, another friend of mine, his name is Sami. He's from Pakistan. He's uh, living in Wrotwov. And this was during summertime. And Muslims, they uh, celebrate this month of Ramadan where they fast. So he was fasting. It was during that time. And when you fast, you cannot eat until the very late in the evening when the sun sets. And he had still a couple of hours to go and he was very very hungry as you can imagine after not eating the whole day in the summer when the days are long and he was just walking around in the market square then he saw some street performance somebody was playing music so he decided to go there and watch that just to pass some time and while he was standing there he notices an old couple and he decided to talk to them Turns out they were missionaries, spent some time in India, they travel all around the world, they have no home, no money, nothing, etc. <clears throat> the same story that I heard before. And he started talking with them and they actually asked him that they don't have any food today. They don't have any food, so if they can, he can offer them any food. And he had already planned to go to Pizza Hut to eat some pizza after sunset, so he offered, okay, you can come with me, I will uh, buy you as well. So they had a nice dinner at Pizza Hut, they had a nice conversation together, the three of them. And then at the end of the dinner, he went to his home and they left. And for him, it was an interesting experience as well. So he decided to tell me. And while I was listening to this story, I, I had this strong feeling. I have heard this before somewhere. <laughs> and it took me a while to realize that who told me and how, in which context. But when I realized, I thought, oh my God, I need to introduce these people. So I invited both of them uh, for a coffee and they were just sitting and I asked Sami, you told me a very interesting experience that happened to you recently, why don't you tell it to Ola? And he started to tell the story, the same story that I just told you. And as he was telling that story and when he reached to that couple and he started to describe them and so on, I could see this, this glow on her face because she realized that was the same couple that she had met a few years earlier in Bratislava. There was all the same story and all the same things. And immediately there was a strong connection between those people. Even though they had never met, they met some random people and then randomly decided to tell me those stories and randomly for me to connect them both on that same day. And you know, they fell in love. They're, they started dating. So I may or may not find my one, but I can be assured that I actually did help find some other two people find their ones. <laughs>